Hi friends, it's Joan at Ten Pentacles Tarot, and today I'm going to review for you the Black Moon Astrology Cards by Susan Shepard. Sorry about that chair squeaky. That was me. Okay. Um, so this is a pretty big deck. It's, it's a good size. Well, it's a good size box. The deck isn't that big, but I'll show you. Okay, so this is what the side looks like. It's published by Blue Angel. And this is what it says on the back, featuring 52 cards and guidebook. Drawing on the ancient discipline of interpreting the night sky, the Black Moon Astrology cards give you access to the tangible wisdom contained in the heavens above. The movements of the planets, the luminaries, and the stars are reflected in the happenings on Earth and influence our lives, bodies, souls, and destinies. And this is $25.95 in the U.S., and this printing was printing printed in 2021. So it's just a couple years old. Excuse me, I need a drink of water. My throat's really dry today. All right, so um, it's a two piece top and bottom box, sturdy cardboard. I really like the artwork on the box. And let's look at the, oh, and this is what the inside looks like. Okay. Let's look at the guidebook first. This is a soft cover matte finish guidebook. That's what it looks like on the back. So we have, um, again, it's printed in 2021, table of contents introduction what are the black moon astrology cards it says these 52 divination cards are based upon the most important placements of a horoscope making the black moon astrology cards quite an in-depth astrological deck however you don't need to be an astrologer to read these cards this deck is designed to make the principles of astrology accessible to all and it can therefore be read just as simply as any oracle deck and that's always good to know. So it talks about the planets and the lights, cards 1 to 11. The black moon Lilith is card 12. The signs and the houses, cards 13 to 36. Beyond the basics, the elements, cards 37 to 40. The lunar nodes, card 41 to 42. Eclipses, cards 43 and 44. Part of fortune, card 45. And then aspects, card 46 to 48. Returns, card 49 to 50. Mercury Retrograde, card 51. And Void, of course, Moon, card 52. All right, don't let that intimidate you. We will do a one-card reading at the end so you can see how the book's written and to see um, if it's understandable for you or if you can relate to it. So here are some suggested card spreads. The Here, Now, and Later spread. The Astrological Wheel spread. The Black Moon Spread, Planetary Spread, Course of Action Spread, Black Moon Romance Spread. Ooh, if you'd like to see some of these, let me know. Um, okay, and then card meanings. So for each card, we have the number of the card, um, the name of the card. There is a quote, and then about one, two. Okay, there's a description of the card, which is what's going on um, astrologically. And then we have the sun card in brief. The corresponding tarot card is the sun and then key ideas. All right. So like I said, we'll do a one card reading at the end so you can see how exactly this is written. So it goes through each card the same way. And then And then at the end, we have um, about the author, Susan Shepard. We have also from, also from Blue Angel Publishing, Magical Spell Cards. Ooh, I haven't seen those. And then there's some publishing information. So that's the guidebook, chock full of lots of great information. Let's take a look at the cards. Now here, ugh. Okay, this is the only thing I don't like about the deck, and it's that there's no insert for the cards, and they do this. If that doesn't bother you, um, you're a better person than I am. 
but this is not a deal breaker. I still like the cards. Um, <laughs> but I would love it better if there was an insert in it. So, okay, let's take a look. These cards are matte finish. They're thick. They're heavyweight cardstock. This is what the back looks like. And, of course, you can't see the sheen because there's no sheen on it. All right, so let's just go ahead and look at each card, and then um, we'll do our reading. All right, oh, and I want to show you the difference. This is the size difference in the card. So it's a typical Oracle deck size, really, about an inch wider and about three-quarters of an inch uh, longer than a typical tar uh, tarot deck, which this is my Radiant Rider Smith deck. All right, so let's look so... Number one, the sun and spirit. Two, the moon and soul. Three, mercury and mind. Venus and love. Mars and force. I do like the artwork on these a lot. Saturn and truth. Jupiter and abundance. Chiron and healing. Uranus and and genius, Neptune and sacrifice, Pluto and transformation, Black Moon Lilith and mystery, Aries, I am, Taurus, I have, Gemini, I think, Oops. Cancer, I feel, Leo, I will, Virgo, I analyze, Libra, I balance. Scorpio, I transform. Sagittarius, I see. Capricorn, I use. Aquarius, I know. Pisces, I believe. Then we have first house, the body. Second house, owning. Third house, messages. Fourth house, roots. Fifth house, creativity. Sixth house, routine. Seventh house, partners. Eighth house, endings and beginnings. Ninth house, faith. Tenth house, the world. Eleventh house, friends. Twelfth house, escape. Then we have the fire element, desire. Earth element, stability. Air element, communicating. And water element, sensing. And we have the north node, life's purpose. The south node, life's debts. Um, the lunar eclipse, change. Solar eclipse, revolution. Part of fortune, increase. Grand trine, blessings. Grand cross, Provoker, Yod, Destiny, or Yod, Jupiter Returns, Benefits, Saturn Return, Age. I'm sorry, that was Jupiter Return, not Returns. Jupiter Return is Benefits, Saturn Return, Age, Mercury Retrograde, Reinvention, and Void, of course, Moon, Missing. All right, very interesting. So I can tell right now I have a lot to learn from this deck. It's very intriguing to me. I like the way the cards look and feel. These are going to be a little big for me to do the uh, riffle shuffle. So I'm not even going to attempt that. I'll do the side riffle. And then we will um, do a reading. But let, me, let me shake these up a little bit. Shuffle them. They shuffle fine. They don't stick together. It's good. They're a little big for my hands. I can't riffle shuffle them. They're big. But I mean, I still like them. And that big cards are not a deal breaker either. All right. All right. Spirit. 
What do you have to say to us through this deck today? What do you have to say to the viewer through this deck? All right, let's do that one because it flipped up. It's number three, Mercury and Mind. So if, um, keep in mind the number three, this may have meaning for you. This is what the card looks like up close. Mercury and Mind. All right, so number three. This is what the book says. Okay. Mercury and Mind. If you want to tell people the truth, make them laugh. Otherwise, they'll kill you. <laughs> and, that, and that's so true. That's by Oscar Wilde. It says, Mercury, the planet of intelligence and talking, is the closest planet to the sun, also making it the fastest planet to move through the zodiac. The Mercury card suggests you must put effort behind your talk. The god Mercury is the Roman counterpart of the Greek god Hermes, the messenger with wings at his heels and on his hat, connected to everything associated with the mind. Quick wit, brevity, mental flights, trickery, inspiration, and also movement, as in moving ahead and also transits. Mercury gives poetry to the imagination, since the gods Mercury and Hermes are related to the Egyptian god Thoth, god of writing, patron of scribes, and those who work as divine mediators and interpreters. And that is Thoth on the card. I don't know if you noticed that. The god Mercury and his counterparts also have very much to do with magic and medicine. Oh, my light just went off. I hope you can still see. Um, well, that might be... What did I just say when that went off? The god Mercury and his counterparts also have much to do with magic and medicine. So magic and medicine may be important to you right now. When it comes to the body, Mercury rules the eyes, brain, nerves, as well as the fingers and toes. In ancient Greece, Hermes was the god of roads and transportation and was the son of Apollo, the sun god. This makes sense, Mercury being the closest planet to the sun. Mercury is also a comedian and can be a bit of a trickster. Just when the energy seems to be flowing one way, Mercury changes the direction. Might we add, Mercury is spontaneous and insanely flexible. Mercury is the wisdom and the stupidity found in intelligence when it is not connected to the heart or the feelings. Mercury maximizes the imagination, but can also symbolize the liar when it comes to double talk with mixed meanings. It's the planet of gaslighting, causing purposeful confusion in the minds of others to gain something not really deserved. However, Mercury shows how mentally sharp and flexible we are, our mental range, and how eloquent. Mercury tends to be chatty, superficial, and into playing games, psychological games, and other types of puzzles. Mercury governs friendly relationships and also the Freudian slip, where you say something that doesn't come out as intended, but actually reveals your real thoughts. When the Mercury card presents itself in a reading, it's time to use all of your mental faculties to get your point across. Words and how you use them are very significant. It may mark a period where you either have to talk your way out of something or talk your way into something. Whatever the reason or occurrence, how you communicate through writing or speaking is of utmost importance here. Composition, writing, or editing may figure in. It is not a time to stay static or to sit still. Beware of gossip and other scandals. The important thing to remember is that what you say in this situation can and will be used against you. So you choose your words wisely. The planet Mercury also rules over technology. So if your question is about career or a job, you can be certain mastering some newer form of technology is about to come into play. Since Mercury is the planet of speed, you can expect to see fast developments. Regarding romance or relationships, it can mean that friendship is the best option for you now. The time has not yet ripened to enter a relationship with the person. You may attract partners and perhaps friends who are non-emotional, highly rational, and objective. These lovers or friends may be offended by flip remarks or joking over serious matters. You may become involved with someone who double talks, is witty, but who does not emotionally connect. This is also the card of brothers and sisters, as well as twins. Now marks a period which involves observation, reasoning, taking things apart, and putting them back together as they were, 
or in your own order. It is a time of flighty emotions and matters developing quickly. Mercury also signifies travel, maps, and staying in motion, so you may be going on a trip, a more noteworthy vacation than you, the usual trips you take. The matter in question is best served by using intellect, weighing the matter, being reasonable, and also being spontaneous in your responses. Codes and forms of magic may also figure in. Mercury brings on keen awareness, so use your mind and what you know to the fullest in this matter. The Mercury card in brief. Okay, so that was the long uh, description of the card that I just read. Now, if you don't want to read that much, read the Mercury card in brief section, which says, Writing and words, being good with words and numbers, counting, the number seven, books, magazines, libraries, reading voraciously, the post office, mail, the internet, telecommunications, software, speech, impromptu speaking, incessant talking, communication, debates, the key to knowledge, teachers and education, having deep penetrating perception, exactitude, sharpening your wit, comedy, using humor, maps and following maps, vehicles, roads, staying in motion, speed, swiftness, siblings, youth and appearing youthful, eyes, fingers, the brain, and the voice box, merchants and anything mercantile, being versatile, being adaptable, being expressive and animated, as above so below, playing pranks, being a trickster, lying when the truth serves you better, remaining elusive, talking while not listening, being hard to pin down, remaining deaf and outwitting any opponents. The corresponding tarot card is the magician, and the key ideas here are speaking, travel, speed, coordination, adeptness, arguments, glibness, and technology. And that is a lot of information for that card and for each card. So um, I think this book, I mean the guidebook will really, really help you learn a lot about these cards and about astrology in general. So... I hope you enjoyed that. That was my review of the Black Moon Astrology Cards by Susan Shepard, published by Blue Angel in 2021. If you enjoyed the review, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already done so. I have well over 400 videos for you to watch. Um, from subjects like anything, really anything metaphysical, subjects like tarot, oracle cards, um, tarot and oracle readings, deck reviews. Um, I have a 10 lesson series on how to read tarot for beginners. So there's lots and lots of things and there's different divination methods as well. So um, if you subscribe, it's completely free for you. It helps me out a whole lot. I want you to know um, that I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever it is where you are. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.